Welcome to week five of Fridays with the Dean as we move closer to the to level three, the next level of our pandemic lockdown uh, experience. I want to share with you today uh, some of the things that have been really important for me over many years in my own spirituality and uh, faith journey. One of the things that I have long been drawn to uh, is the Franciscan and Benedictine rules of life. I think because they offer sound, challenging and a meaningful framework and discipline to what a holy way of life is, a life offered to God. In his prologue to the Benedictine rule, Benedict urges his monks to run while you have the light of life, that the darkness of death may not overtake you. Run while you have the light of life, that the darkness of death may not overtake you. This is not meant to be a morbid statement but rather a reminder that life is short, we must run. A reminder that we should live with a sense of urgency and the goodness of life in the now. That we should constantly foster in our own lives the awareness of the presence of God. This all builds on what I shared in my Fridays with the Dean last week. That if we as Christians want to make a real difference to how we and others experience God in the story of the 21st century, then we need to make Christianity a way of life, individually and corporately, rather than just a system of belief. How can we be an Easter people, straddling between Good Friday and Easter Sunday, I asked last week. Well, as well as developing our own rhythms of life, which will draw us closer and deeper into God, another thing we need to consider is how we as Christians might cause peace. The Catholic Church helpfully defines peace as not simply the absence of war, it is the fruit of justice, not merely the absence of war. It is the fruit of justice. A peaceful society is a just society. It provides adequate resources for education, housing and health care as vital ways in which to build peace. But while these physical resources are a necessary part of peace, they're not sufficient. To build peace, there is also a need for spiritual resources. And religion can provide these, I believe, in a unique way. The key spiritual resource that religion offers is that of hope. Hope is the future of humanity. The Second Vatican Council stated that the future of humanity lies in the hands of those able to pass on to future generations reasons for living and hoping. The future of humanity lies in the hands of those able to pass on to future generations reasons for living and hoping. Sound advice, reasons for living and hoping are at the heart of true religion and the greatest gift that religion can give to humanity. Hope in this life and in the next. Religion offers hope against despair and love that casts out all fear, for it is fear and despair that feeds such things as wars, terrorism, anxiety, 
hopelessness and anger. We as a church need to promote reasons for living and hoping. A key task in the 21st century, I believe, is for us to engage thoughtfully with our religious tradition and from that base work with other religions to build peace. If we are to do this work well, each of us needs to do it in a committed, intentional way. It needs to become a way of life, a life journey. It needs to be done individually, but also in community. As commitment and involvement in community avoids the tendency to be self-absorbed, a characteristic so inherent in so much current Western spirituality, and in our Western consumer production driven reality. This way of life leads us to hope in this life and in the next. It gives us and others a reason and purpose to live in peace. So my question is, how will you choose to live and tell God's story today and all the days of your life? I want to add my thanks to so many of you for the way that you have continued to generously uh, make sure that we at the cathedral get our donations that you uh, uh, that you gift and that so many of you have gone on to AP giving. That means it is much easier for us to budget and watch our cash flow. If you would like to uh, offer a donation or go on to AP Giving, please contact Merle at the office email address or there are also some details on our website. Thank you to those who are keeping in touch with one another in our community, for those phone tree callers and for those of you who uh, uh, as you are phoned, uh, sharing some of your journey with each other. For me, this time has really brought home what relational and community-based place we are and how important that is in all of our lives. And I suspect, like me, many of you can't wait until we can at least be with one another physically rather than this virtual time that we are apart, even though we are together. In saying that, uh, the government's announcement uh, earlier this week that we would move into Level 3 on, two, on midnight on Monday night next week, I just want to say that little will change with how we at the Cathedral are currently working and the virtual ministry and liturgical offerings will remain the same during Level 3. In saying that, please, please don't hesitate to contact Merle via the office email or Reverend Avetsa or myself if you feel you would like to. Our contact details, both phone and email, are available on our website or on the email that is coming out each Friday. If you haven't been receiving the Friday email and you would like to, please get in touch with Merle and give her your details and she can add you to our email list. This email also has, um, has the links to our Sunday services and our evening prayer and any other things that we are offering from our website and YouTube channel during this time of virtual ministry. And so until next Friday, when we will be in level three, my prayers daily for each of you continue. And I know that as I pray for you, you are praying for us and for all of those who are affected uh, by this coronavirus and all those wonderful people who are on the front line, the essential workers and the medical staff, the police, so many others who are supporting this endeavour. It takes all of us to make a difference. 
and I know that you are doing your part. And so I look forward to being with you again uh, next Friday. Until then, God bless you richly uh, and keep safe.